I'm Mark Abney, peanut entomologist at the University of Georgia, and in this video we're going to talk about sampling peanuts for foliage feeding caterpillars. Now it's not hard to sample for foliage feeders, but two problems that we have, one, not sampling often enough, and two, not sampling correctly. So in this video we're going to show you how to sample peanuts for foliage feeding caterpillars. So when you come in the field and you're going to sample for caterpillars, one of the first things you got to think about is how many samples are you going to take. Ten is a good number. So when we come in the field, we're going to sample at 10 locations, we need to walk the field. You want a representative sample of the field. Too often we go to one or two spots, find a lot of caterpillars, and get excited and want to treat. But we need to cover the field. So how do we do that? This is a beat sheet. It's three feet long, which makes it very easy to know how much of the peanuts I'm sampling. A lot of scouts and consultants, and as growers, you may not use this because it can be aggravating, but when you, it's easier to see the caterpillars, but I'm gonna show you how to do this with the beet sheet. So we come in here, we put our beet sheet on the ground, and the one thing you can't do is be gentle, all right? You got to beat these peanuts hard. You're not worried about tearing them up. Okay. So now we have dislodged the caterpillars from the plants and now we're going to want to do two things. We want to count the caterpillars and we want to identify what we have here on the beet sheet. When we come here and we're looking at these caterpillars, I'm going to fold these plants back. I'm going to count this too. See, my beet sheet didn't make it all the way up to the next of the plant, so I'm going to count these. As you can see, there's a lot of caterpillars here, right? So it doesn't, you don't have to be a good scout to be able to see this and count it. So there's a lot of large caterpillars here but you can't be in a hurry. The tiny caterpillars, the really small ones, will not move immediately. You gotta wait until they start to move and then you can count them. So here's an example of a really small caterpillar that gets missed if you're in a hurry. So most of you when you come to the field are not gonna have a beet sheet. So I'm gonna do a three foot section of row without the beet sheet. So we beat the peanuts, we're going to fold the plants back, and then we're going to count all the caterpillars. I don't know if it shows up good on the camera, the caterpillars are going to be harder to see on the ground. It's still very doable, you just have to take your time, go ahead and count these big ones. I like to smush them into the ground like that as I count, but I'm also making sure these are all velvet bean caterpillars. But if, they were, if there were other caterpillars out here, you want to keep up with how many of each species there are. When it's all said and done, you're going to have 10 locations with three feet of row at each location. You're going to have a number of caterpillars. What you want to give the grower is the number of caterpillars per row foot. It's not the number of caterpillars per three row feet. So you're going to divide your count by three. And if you have 10 locations, you'll divide it by 10. So you're going to tell the grower he has one or two or 10 caterpillars per row foot because our thresholds in peanuts are based on number of caterpillars per row foot. So the main things with scouting peanuts for foliage feeders, one, cover the field, two, don't be gentle, be aggressive, knock the caterpillars out, make sure that you make an accurate count and get an accurate ID, and then report the number to the grower as caterpillars per row foot. If you have questions about caterpillar management in peanut or any other insect management problems in peanut, contact your local University of Georgia County Extension agent.